Hello and welcome to another unboxing with me, Adam Turner. Today we're going to be unboxing uh, the first Warhammer Quest game set in the 40k universe, Blackstone Fortress. Now, as many of you know, I'm not uh, much of a dungeon crawler player, but um, I used to play a lot of 40k. And whenever I saw this, I was really interested because I've heard it's not too uh, character heavy um, and that a lot of the mechanics are really nice and it has some of the best models in that genre. Um, although we don't really expect anything less from Games Workshop, uh, that's their modus operandi, that's their business model, is to have the best models in the industry. So let's get it open. Um, I'm excited to play it. But the first step is, of course, unboxing it and showing it to you guys. So, still got the shrink wrap on, so let's get it removed. So, let's see what's inside. So, uh, you can see here in the front a really nice image of some of the characters. Um, some of the road tra rogue traders, there's a Kroot in the background, the Elder, um, very nice. On the back of the box we have uh, a wonderful inscription of the different, uh, the, the main characters here, the player characters, plus some of the antagonists here. We have the Spindle Drones, we have the Trader Guardsmen, the Rogue Psychers, Cultists, Beastmen, and of course the Chaos Lord there, um, Obsidious Malix. We also have here on the left hand side um, the contents of the box. Um, you can see it's made in the UK, that's kind of rare these days. Um, and so, uh, without further ado, let's get it open. So, I'll just get the box oh, uh, nice box opening sign there. I'll just put that in the background so we can always remember what, what it is we're opening. So. Here we have the sprues, um, lovely plastic smell coming up off these. Um, we have here, I think this is the Elder Shadow Seer. Um, beautiful detail. Um, some of the halflings, um, parts of the robot. I'm not sure what their name is. Um, here we have the other sprue of the main characters. Uh, gorgeous detail on these. Um, don't know if you can see there, but you can see like the beautiful inscriptions there on the um, characters' robes, um, really nice, and like the the detail on the fur or scales of the cloak, very nice. Um, here we have the oh, <laughs> we've pulled out the Chaos Lord himself, Obsidious Malex. Um, detail on his face there is really nice. Can can we zoom in on that? Doesn't seem like it. Oh. There we go. Really nice. Uh, we also have here some some of the Trader Guardsmen, um, the parts of the Psyker. Um, what else we got here? We got some of the Beastmen, I think that is. Um, yeah, definitely Beastmen there. This might be the Urgul, actually, sorry. Um, what else we got here? So, um, uh, is that the. Chaos, oh no, that's a Trader Guardsman as well. Oh, maybe this is the um, Chaos Space Marine right there. And then this one is much the same, Trader Guardsman, Trader Guardsman, um, Urgul, Beastman, I suppose these are just identical actually. Um, and then the next thing is we have this beautiful divider which keeps our miniatures away from the other components so they don't hurt each other. Um, that's a nice addition. Um, some care has gone into the packaging here. Um, then we've got, of course, our bases. Look like 30 millimeter bases, I think. Um, an extra one, which seems to have either left the packet or was included by mistake. Um, we have, as well as that, we've got our different encounter cards. We've got our um, enemy cards. Um, we also have our exploration cards here. Uh, it's not focusing. Um, there we go. Um, where we can see here uh, we have a combat. And so we have a layout here uh, based on uh, our starting position here. Um, 
and so the maglev and then we can see like uh, how we'll set up the rooms and so these contain different things like combats and challenges that we'll uh, have to uh, overcome in order to complete our mission. Um, we also have here um, some artifacts. Um, these are equipment uh, cards which we can use uh, to uh, improve our chances in battle or um, just improve our characters in general. We also have initiative cards here. Um, so these are for each of the different characters, such as um, this one, the Janus Strike, um, the Rogue Trader, and we can look at how um, they all match up in a certain combat. And we also have, what's this? Oh, we have uh, a chapter from the book um, that will accompany this, um, probably from Black Library. Um, some of these are uh, very good, uh, very interesting books. Um, really nice setting. I mean, uh, Warhammer 40,000 has got one of the best fantasy sci-fi settings that I've come across. Um, then we also have our dice here. We've got our D20, um, which is used for mostly for the um, enemies and what they'll do. We also have our different challenge dice. We have our success dice. Um, nice quality dice. Um, nothing here is heat printed, it's all uh, molded. So we've got our destiny dice in black, we've got our regular character dice in white. They're a little bit smaller than I might have imagined, but that's not a problem. Um, I'm sure we'll still be able to read it. Uh, we have here the um, character cards. Um, so we have the character cards here for our uh, player characters, like for example, Janice Drake, they seems to be the main character in this. Um, so we have the different spaces for their dice that will go so that they can do their activations. Um, we have the special rules, we have their weapons, um, we have their secret agenda as well. And on the back of these we have, um, well on the back of the player characters we have inspired versions. Let's see if I can get this open. Um, so I can show you the difference between the um, enemy and the... Uh, Player characters. Um, really doesn't want to open. <laughs> oh, yeah. so that's it open. So we've got here. We've got um, our Janice Drake character card. Um, on the back we have these inspired versions, these kind of leveled up versions, because there's no uh, leveling up per se in this game. Um, there is, however, these inspired versions. Some of, most of them are temporary, some of them are permanent. Um, your characters can actually die during this, um, although of course if you replay the campaign they will come back to life. Um, here we have the next character, uh, Thaddeus the Purifier. Um, these characters are beautiful, um, really well sculpted, and they can be used in your games of uh, Warhammer 40,000. Um, here we have an Imperial Navigator, the Espern Locarno. Um, these guys travel the warp, they're always um, connected to the God Emperor of mankind to enable them to navigate it. Um, there's Pious Born, the Missionary Zealot, um, he wants to burn things. Uh, there's Rhine and Rouse, the Rattling Twins. Um, rattlings are the equivalent of halflings in the 40k universe. Um, Ur025, he's an imperial robot. Um, not quite sure what his uh, modus operandi is or what his uh, character is like. Uh, here's Dayak Grek, um, he's a crude tracker, he's probably very good at uh, navigating the fortress. Uh, there's Amelin Shadow Guide, um, this is our Azurani Ranger. Um, I think from the Eldar race, pretty sure. Um, then of course we come now on to the enemies, the antagonists. So here we have Traitor Guardsmen, um, we have their abilities, like their different weapons, um, the range of these weapons, their special rules, um, and on the back we also have their behavior tables. This is where we roll the d20 and then we can see what happens. So for example if they're hidden, i.e. they cannot see the explorers, they're engaged with an explorer or they're in cover, um, they're close to an explorer or in any other situation. Um, what to do? There's the Negavolt cultists, um, some Urgols, um, 
I don't know if these are the equivalent of the Beastmen Urgles, but um, they don't really look like it. They look more like ghouls. Um, spindle drones, these are kind of spongy and squishy, so I don't think they're too difficult to deal with. Um, rogue Psychers, these guys look like uh, they'd be hard to deal with. Um, Chaos Beastmen as well, kind of aggressive. Um, Chaos Space Marines, you see they don't really have much rules here. That's probably because of how difficult they are to deal with. Um, just really solid enemies that will give you um, maybe some nightmares whenever you're playing through this. Um, <laughs> all of these things look pretty bad. Rapid fire there. Um, take an onslaught action, reroll field attack rolls for that action. So they can reroll field attacks. That seems seems pretty dangerous. And then of course we have our Obsidious Malex, the big bad Chaos Lord. He's probably one of the ones that we'll meet towards the end of a campaign. Um, not going to be fun to fight against him one on one or one on uh, our group, but imagine if he's accompanied by a large retinue, could be really bad. Um, so those are the character cards. Um, of course, um, there's plenty there to be getting on with. Um, we also have this cool thing: these uh, stasis chambers. Um, so these are basically just poly bags um, that, that are like, resealable. Um, where you can put all your character information inside and um, they have this little hole so that you can get the air out of them pretty easily um, They've got a nice little design on the back and so you can kind of like save your campaign um, Until the next round so you don't have to play it all at once even you could pause in mid-round even and use these to uh, Save your game. There's quite a number of these which means there's one for each character or you could even do multiple campaigns at the same time if that was your with different playgroups, uh, we have here um, our different rule books. Um, get this open. We also have a snap fit guide and a suggested um, painting method. Of course, it with with all Games Workshop things, <laughs> they always give these um, recommended uh, paint color schemes. But there's really no way that if you paint them using these colors, that it'll look like this. Um, they're using advanced techniques here. Um, which is not, not nothing that I'm capable of doing, um, but I know for a fact that this is not how it'll look if you use these paints. But it'll look really nice anyway, especially with the um, the shadings and the the washes that Games Workshop produce now. It makes um, your models look a lot more detailed, even if it's just a basic paint job. Uh, so you've got the read these this first rules. You also have um, rule books for combat and stuff in there as well. Um, and then of course here is the hidden vault envelope. So this is what you open after you've completed the game. Um, so I've been told that these are all unique, uh, or not all unique, but there are, not every game is the same. Um, meaning that I don't know how many different versions there are, but it means that um, different versions of Blackstone Fortress will have different uh, lore to add. I don't know if this will advance the lore of the 40k universe or if it's something related specifically to the Blackstone Fortress. Blackstone Fortresses exist in the 40k universe. They're kind of like alien space stations filled with um, advanced technology that all of the different races and factions want to obtain um, from a previous uh, epoch in the 40k universe long before the current day as it were in this universe so this of course probably contains some very juicy information and then in the back here we have uh, all of the different tiles um, so these are for our combat um, and how we can go about developing the board um, we also have here the ships on the back here um, I'll try and get this open carefully as possible. Uh, oh goodness. Oh, there we go. Okay. If you're using an, a box cutter, please be careful. These things are very sharp. And you would not want to hurt yourself in any way. Um, so let's get this plastic ripped off. Um, we can go through these. So. Here we have the different um, hex tiles, so that's how this game layout is created, and that's a really cool feature as well. Um, you start off in a central location, and then you build out from there, and you have to complete each room before you can move on to the next stage. Here we have different ones. 
Um, these darkened white lines or boldened white lines there cover um, maybe like walls and things that you can't move through. Um, here we have different uh, sort of connecting tunnels. I don't know what that purple thing means just yet. Um, here we have the different wound markers. We have the first player marker here. Um, we have um, this is an area for keeping your exploration cards and um, not quite sure what this one is for. This is for your destiny dice, which are dice that anyone can use. Um, here we have the different spaceships that your um, explorers can make use of uh, in order to uh, rest up, recuperate, and so on. So some of them are for different characters. So for example, here's the one that can be used by uh, the Rattlings and the Robot. Here's the one that can be used by the Crute. Uh, um, here's the one that's used by Amal and Shadow Guide. Yeah, definitely an Eldar. That's an Eldar ship. Um, I know that. Um, this one can be used by Thaddeus and Pius Vorn. Um, Janus Drake has his own ship, as does Esper and Locarno. Um, down the bottom here we have other different chits, which um, will be useful for different things during the game. And then, finally, we just have a bunch of polybags and another base that's just randomly in here. Very nice. Um, so that, that's pretty much it. Let's, let's get the rulebook open and have a look at this. Um, and we can show you some of the beautiful artwork that goes along with, well, I'm assuming there's artwork inside these things, that go along with many Games Workshop products. So here we have the, the main rulebook. Uh, it says, well, read this first rulebook anyway. It's got an introduction, it's got uh, the miniatures, it's got uh, setup. How to play, I guess, your first um, game, uh, just to get you familiarized with the rules. Um, quick reference guide, so you've got your attack action dice, you've got your recovery rolls and things like that whenever you get wounded, because um, your wounds can go away. Um, here's um, combat rulebook, um, how to set up for a combat, um, how to move enemies, and so on. Um, Less artwork here than I'd imagine, but I suppose the artwork is the game itself. Um, data sheets. Oh, this, this, these data sheets allow you to play, use these miniatures in your games of Warhammer 40,000. Although you'll probably need to buy a lot more stuff in order to do that as well. So that's really more so for introducing people to 40k, or if you already have 40k, you could use these models there as well. Um, this is for returning to the purpose, uh, uh, precipice. Um, so this is after your first game, I'm assuming. Um, different things about strongholds, descents, um, and hidden bolt. Uh, background. Ah, okay, okay. This is like a history of us. This is where, oh, this is where we've got all this nice art, nice artwork. Look at that. Um, maybe character information, different about the explorers, a little background information, the ships. Ah, uh, yeah. This is this is the nice stuff. Okay, and the last one is how to build these things and how to paint them, at least rudimentarily. Um, so different base sizes, oh, they range from 25 mils up to 40 mils. I'm assuming the 40 mils is for our big bad boss Malex. So yeah, very nice. Um, looking forward to getting this game out on the table and played. So thanks for watching, um, this has been the unboxing of Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. I've been Adam Turner, and please like and subscribe this video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you, bye bye.